It's not what you know, it's who you know, but it's not, it's not who you know. More importantly, it's who knows you. Hey guys, it's Matt Haycox, and I'm here at home again today with James Locke. Lockie, as you may know him, he's been a mainstay of TOWIE for the last seven years. You may have seen him on some other shows like MTV Cribs, uh, Your Face or Mine, and he's recording at the moment for, um, for Celebs Go Dating next year. So uh, we're going to be talking today about, about business, about life, social media, uh, you know, monetizing, monetizing your, your online profile and all, all the usual things that you, know, you guys like to hear about. So thanks a lot for being here, James. James and, Thank you uh, for having me. Alyssa, obviously, I gave a little bit of an introduction, but uh, can, can, can you flesh it out a bit more for us? Let's let's go back go back seven years to uh, how it all started and um, how you landed on the show. What, what, also, what you were doing before then, really. The thing is, I don't look at it like a failure. I look at it like it's a learning curve. I learn from it. I understand. That's taught me a lot about business. Uh, before then, I had my own company. I had an electrical company. You know, um, that was my background. I was a, uh, how I was old a sparky. Are you now? I'm 32 now. So, yeah. Um, as soon as I left school, done an apprenticeship. I'd um, obviously done it, went through the um, through the motions, a uh, lot of qualifications, etc. Um, started off working for a firm, then went self-employed, then started off my own company. You know, uh, when I just like subcontracting off of various different uh, main contractors. Um, then one day I was, or I was in Vegas. Some of the girls I knew, I knew we all sort of know each other. You know. Um, we're all in the same sort of, we're not in the same sort of circles as friends, but we all, when you're doing the circuit, the Essex circuit, let's call it, um, you're all aware of each other, you know, the boys and the girls. Anyway, cut a long story short, they see me out in Vegas. Um, I was on the table, invited the girls over, had a chat, a couple of the boys was there as well, Joey and, and Kirk. Um, then we exchanged numbers, got on quite well. When I come back, they put me forward. I got a phone call from the producers. They invited me down for a chat, and then that's it. It's, 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 it's as quick as that, being in the right place at the right time, you know? What, what was your logic for wanting to do it at the time? I, mean, I just it, thought it was just fun, or did you, did you actually have a master plan? No, do you know what I'm saying? I just thought it was an opportunity. Like, it, it's um, like TOWIE, um, or any sort of TV, whether it be reality, or I don't know, if he was acting or whatever, it's all a great platform, you know? Um, it's a great platform for, I don't know, whatever you want to sort of achieve. You, it was a new door, it was a new, it was a new direction. I sort of just, like the appeal of it, I was in two minds. It was like, I didn't really know what, what to expect, you know? But um, yeah, I just went for it, you know? I didn't really think, overthink, I went for it. And yeah, the rest is history. And in terms of that platform and that audience growth, <laughs> at what kind of pace did that happen for you? I mean, I guess to, to contextualise that, I was talking recently with one of the girls from Geordie Shaw, and, and, and she, de she described her audience growth as, as, as very gradual, you know, like yeah. e each week she'd get released a bit more. Then, then you know, obviously we've, we've had a few of the Love Island guys on the show, and you know, they, they go, they go into the Love Island and instantly get a million followers. Well, that's the thing. I think, obviously, when I first come, come on to uh, TOWIE, um, there's only really three reality shows of that concept, you know? You had Geordie Shaw, Made in Chelsea, and TOWIE. Now, TOWIE is still the original. That was the first reality show of that type in this country. Um, all these sort of reality shows come from, or off the back of the hills, you know? Um, that, that sort of, that was like the benchmark. That, that, that started off the, the motion for these, for these shows. Um, when I first come on TOWIE, it was still in its, in the prime, in its prime, you know? Um, I wouldn't say it isn't in its prime now, but it obviously it's, it's not where it was yeah, there's, there's, years well, ago. It's like anything, it's-, it's There's it's more like, competition now. Yeah, right? it's a lot more, exactly, this is the thing. So now there's so many reality shows, you've got, you've got reality shows about Benefit Street, you've got reality shows, you've got, you know, you, there's, there's it, it, a load of reality it, shows. It's, yeah. it's no different to any other business yeah. model, is it? I mean, ultimately, the viewers only have so many hours in the day that they can, they can, they can watch TV, and you know, it's not about not liking one no. show above the other, you, you can only watch so much. Exactly, and when you have one like business like module that works, you you seem to find a lot more of them businesses appear, you know, a lot more people then start to invest in them sort of businesses. Um, and that's what's happened with, obviously with reality TV and with the concept of, of TOWIE. Um, but with TOWIE, like Made in Chelsea or um, Geordie Shaw, they build you up gradually. It's like doing an apprenticeship. So you build up, you know, you go in there and then you, you, sl you slowly get more airtime. As you get more airtime, the, the, the viewers get to know you more, uh, they get to like you more, you know. Um, is, is that is that always a conscious decision, or or, or or does it depend also on how I guess how much the the audience immediately resonate with you, and, and how maybe crazy or what your own personal storyline is? You, you can come in and you can hit the ground running. Like um, 
But my, my pal, my, my, my best friend, Pia, he's coming, he hit the ground running, you know? I think you can come in and you can, you can move up a lot quicker if your friends are already established. You know why? Because you're going to be doing scenes with them, so therefore yeah, so you're going to see more. Yeah, so people come originally. in with me. Uh, if, well, look, when I first come in, let's say Os Dan, not Dan Osborne, I come in with. Now he come in and he straight away got with one of the main girl characters, so he went like he, he propelled himself a lot quicker than I did. A double whammy. <laughs> yeah, so he done very well for himself, and then I've, obviously it took me longer to build up, but then over time I become one of the main roles uh, one of the main uh, male roles on the show when peter come in he come in as, as my pal so it, it made it elevated him quicker when yasmin my ex-girlfriend come in she come in with me so it elevated her a lot quicker you know it's just it's like anything with any job if you it's it's who you know sort of thing as well as what you know um obviously you have to be a good character i'm not taking anything away from them people them people are great characters peter yasmin are great characters and a great addition to the show you know um but it does help coming in you know, sort of leapfrogging, sure. yeah, if you like. And that, that, that goes across any sort of, any warp of life, business or well, no, I, I, I was gonna say, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in the, th in the things you're saying here, because one of the things I always try and do with my audience, uh, you know, the guys who watch this, is to either t you know, take, let's say, lessons from reality shows mm. and, and contextualise them into business or, 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 or see, see how, how things cross over. And also ultimately, you know, t t talk about how the, the rules of life and the rules of business don't disappear, you know, just because you're a celebrity yeah. or, or just because you're an influencer. But literally ev everything, you, everything you've been saying since this conversation started is... <laughs> would apply whether you're starting a business, building a business, you know, whatever, whatever space it is you're looking at, you know, we can completely take away the fact that you know, you're know you a guy on TV and we're talking about a TV show here. All, all, all of these are just you know, key, key, key principles of, of how, to, how to build your own profile and, and you know, grow your business or grow your audience in general. Of course it applies to anyone. If you take the, that, what I'm saying, you, that applies to any sort of business. If you look at me, basically in reality TV, I am the business, I am the business myself. Mm -hmm. You know, but whether you're an electrician, I don't know, or whatever, you're working in the city, whatever you do, you can, you can be fast-tracked from, you can, you can sit there and make it, it doesn't happen, but it does, of course it happens. I'm not even funny, if, you've, if I've got one of my friends that are applying for a job, of course I'm gonna try and fast, I'm gonna fast-track him. People might say that's not, they might, they might not admit to it, yeah? It's not proper protocol, it should be obviously the best candidate for the job, but let's be honest. If someone you're yeah, exactly. If one of your relatives are applying for a job, everyone does it. it, it it's, it's just people are not honest about it, you know? And as well, to, you know, to, to take that expression one step further, particularly in the, in the light of the audience building that we're talking about, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know, but it's, yeah. not, it's not who you know, more importantly, it's who knows you. Exactly, who knows you, but the thing is as well, it's what I'm trying to say to you, as much as people can fast track you and help you at, you, you, you still you, be, you, you, you still you, be capable of to do the job. Say, you've got, you to, still, be, you've yeah. got to be able to de yeah. deliver the goods there's, when you there's get there. People have come in. There's people. There's, there's, I've had friends that have come in, um, and they've not lasted. They've, they've lasted like a series. You know, uh, not just me. I've had like some of uh, the other castmates, uh, main castmates, have 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 had people come in, and they haven't lasted a series because as much as they can get propelled. Yeah, they, they've, they've got nothing to offer perform. when they get there. Yeah, they might get up there. They might. You might think they're funny. Yeah, because they're your pals. But the audience won't think they're funny, and the producers don't think they're funny. So, do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's not what always what you think. It's obviously what 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 we're catering for. It's like with a business, you're catering for the public. What you think is a good idea, not necessarily the public sure. thinks it's a great idea. And what who you think is funny is not necessarily with reality TV. What everyone else thinks is funny. So it's just it's just it's trial and error, you know. And some things work, some things don't. So tell me, you, you got on the sh you got on the show seven years ago, and, and your, your audience started started to grow. At, 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 what, at what point did you start to, uh, let's like say, take advantage of that, or, 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 or monetize that? You know, put, put 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 into practice. You know, what you've been planning yeah. to do. Um, stra straight away, with like, as soon as you, as soon as you go onto the show, you um, you immediately start making money off the back of it. You know. Obviously, they, when I first started, they, wasn't, they didn't pay you very much. Um, that money, that fee is now, it, it has grown. As longer I've been on the show, it's grown. It's now, it's now a very good, I think it's, it's still, I'm, I think it's a very good wage, you know? Um, but tell me, but, it, but if, if you didn't get the wage, if, if you had to do it for free, would, would you still be happy to do it for free for, 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 the, for the audience growth it gives you and, and the ability outside the um, show? 
not not so much now. No, I think it still needs to be because obviously uh, well, seven, seven, seven years seven years no, ago. seven years ago. Because the thing is, they don't the, the TV the, the TV production companies they're earning money. So why shouldn't I think everyone's got to eat at the table? I think that's 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 fair. That's that's business. I think everyone like, obviously if you've got a business, it's not, it's not like it's like people going to work for free. You ain't going to work go to work for free because you're learning. Like, even when you do an apprenticeship, you don't go to work for free. You're learning a trade. So someone so someone's teaching you, but you still got to live. You still got to pay your bills. So you couldn't. Do you know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. not everyone. Not everyone. No, it's not as lucrative for everyone as it is for all, for some of us. We don't all earn the same. Oh, do people get different paid different amounts? Yeah, on people the show? get paid different amounts on a show, but then some people get more work off the back of the show than others. Yeah. So some people don't don't get a lot, but that's all to do with storyline and other bits and pieces. Loads, there's loads of factors that play into that, you know. So you couldn't just ask someone to come on that show and just and do it for exposure because it's, it's not enough. And like now. Even back then, it wasn't enough, you know. Even when there's a few shows, and and, and now nah, definitely not. There's, there's still there's so many shows now. They got Love Island, and it, when they come in, it's very instant. I think this is see a lot of these Love Islanders. Um, I don't think they realise they 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 sort of they get they get famous very quickly. Um, they're not really prepared for it. They're propelled into this 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 like superstardom. And Love Island is the biggest show. It's the biggest reality show now. You know, yet they go on there for a month and they come out of there like three million followers. Yeah, yeah there's no second, there's no doubts about that. Um, but at the same time, by the time the next love one comes out, the most fun. of them have forgotten about. You know, uh, whereas uh, yeah, with, with Tawi, like I'm, I'm gonna go. Like I've just finished a series of Tawi. Next year I'm gonna be in the next series of Tawi. Then there's another two series next year. I, I'm Tawi's now becoming like it's like a, it's, it's script, Tawi's scripted reality. Um, so it's filmed differently to, to Love Island. You know, Love Island is, is more like a, a Big Brother. Uh, it's filmed in the same style as that. Whereas Tao is a scripted reality, which is people don't really understand what that means. But it's it's sort of like it's, it's halfway between reality and and like a like an East End, like a soap opera, you know. Whereas obviously we're all real characters. The real, we have real relationships, real arguments, real loves, real losses, you know. But certain things are set up where they put. They tell you at the beginning of every episode that it's set up. They put us into positions. You know, they put and say I have an argument with you now, or with this conversation. Say something comes out of this conversation, I'd have to if they have something that they thought was um, important. You want to redo the conversation? They have to do, we have to redo this conversation, which is fake. So sometimes the arguments we have, we have to redo. So I might have an argument with you off camera in a club, but then sometimes I have to redo that argument. But then say on in the, the argument off camera, the original argument, I could, I could say a lot more than what you said. But then you've gone away, had time to think about it. So when you come back on camera. It's now it's, you're giving as good as you got, so it's not that's that that it's not true to life, you know. But they do try and obviously capture it uh, for uh, as real as possible. But it's not a fly on a wall a reality show, you know. So it's, it's very difficult. But that's why it's called scripted reality, you know. And then some things obviously with, with the with the, the the events and other bits and pieces, it's up for entertainment, you know. But it's, that's what makes it fun for us. It's it's an, it's an enjoyment. We enjoy doing it. It's it's an enjoyment. And I think it makes it more fun for for the for the uh, for the viewers as well. I just want to go back to something something you said a minute ago, which is that um, yeah, when someone comes out of Love Island, you know, they, they've got an instant, you know, overnight, you know, million, two yeah. million, three million followers, whatever. But twelve months later, they're forgotten because because, yeah. because, because I wouldn't they're say they're forgotten, but uh, you can only remember you remember the main no, few, 100, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But where where I'm going with this is, is is the fact that one thing I've been talking about a lot lately is is how. That if you want to, if you want to really take advantage of that that instant audi audience that you've got, you know, uh, planning on planning on a life of paid posts for teeth whitening kits yeah. is 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 is, delu is delusional, yeah. and and that you know what what these people need to be doing is having a plan. You know, long before exactly. they go in, of you know, really, what's the passion? What's the purpose? What, what's what's the product? And how once people know who they are, how are they going to then develop their personal brand? This might not be the most profitable thing for the next twelve months. You know, you know, maybe they could smash it. You know, get go, get as many paid posts as possible. Uh, but when the next when the next Love Island people come yeah. out, they're going to be the ones that take it. But what, how can they develop their personal brand and their character so that yeah. they've got? A 15, 20, 25 year career. That's, that's the thing what I'm trying to do at the minute. Obviously, I'm in a bubble. I've been very lucky. Most people, I don't know, life expectancy on Tawi is, is like, like three to four, like three to four years. If that, it's probably not even three years. You know, I've been very lucky. I've been on there seven years nearly, yeah. Um, but I'm still trying to find something to give me longevity, you know. Don't get me wrong, I've got investments and stuff for later life or for a rainy day. But I need a I need, I need to get a business module. Like Peter's been, he's done very well with brand. He's got a brand called Humano, and um, he's doing very well with that. You know, um, he's got it into a lot of the the main online stores and, and and the big stores around the country. But even that in itself, it needs things like that 
can give you longevity, but even that to a point, you 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 build up a brand to offload it to sell it, and then a, a bigger someone else comes in, and they'll take it off you for a, a nice lump sum, which you can go and take and and invest elsewhere. So tell me, you're you're at a, you're at a party. It's 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 four four weeks before the next Love Island comes on, and 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 you meet a couple of the guys and the girls who are going to who are going to be this this year's Love Island contestants. N- nobody knows who they are. What what would your top three pieces of advice to them be of of how of how they can come out the come out of the island and and make a long term sustainable career? Uh, well, one I'd be 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 aware that it's not going to last forever. You're in a bubble, you know. Um, two to be smart, smart with your money, you know. I'd don't just don't think again. Don't think it's going to last forever, you know. Save, you, you have money set aside, you know, or really just enjoy it don't get me wrong you still got to enjoy it but just don't you just be vigilant that it's not going to last forever you know so stack that money you know be smart of your money you know because a lot of these people come on they, they, they start living to, uh, above their means living to a certain lifestyle which they can't sustain you know so after a year they're still living it's why a lot of these reality stars you can see a lot of footballers and stuff yeah, yeah? It, i know it's completely different they're sportsmen but a lot of sports people not even just sports like like footballers but they, they they live above their means they don't put a stuff no, away. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's the same yeah. economics yeah. Yeah. yeah so they and all of a sudden it ends one day they're still living at the same means if they're playing every week or if they're filming every week or whatever and they go bankrupt you know um this is what uh the third piece of advice would be to just stay humble you know Remember people on your way up, you know, because on your way down is a lot harder. So let's let's talk about some of the business businesses that you you've had. Uh, t- I mean, you, you've been involved in restaurants, nightclubs. Yep. T- t- tell us a bit so about I the had specifics. A, I had a restaurant which is which is uh, I'm probably most known for business wise, which is Lockie's Kitchen. It was like a healthy a healthy um, like a, a healthy restaurant. You know, it's it's healthy alternatives. Okay. Um, healthy fast food, or actually sitting sit there? No, down. no, no. It's like healthy fast food, as, as, as fast as healthy food can be. You know, obviously you can't. You, you, healthy food isn't. It ain't like you going to McDonald's or you going to Burger King. It's, it's, it's instant, like a couple of minutes. You know, or it's, or it's pre-made. You, you're, the healthy fast food, you still. It's gonna it still takes a, little, a while to prepare, etc. But yeah, basically just giving healthy alternatives. It was all like protein pancakes, you know, just healthy wraps and other bits and pieces like shakes, smoothies. Um, it's a great concept, something that worked, would have worked very well in central London, you know. Um, but where I try to do it, I try to do it near to where, I don't in Romford, which is quite near to where where I grew up in, 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 in East London. And to be honest with you, it never lost money, but it just it wasn't making enough money uh, where it was, I don't think the concept there, yeah. it, it really took off, um, you know. How, how, how did you feel about that from a, let's, let's say, an, an ego, for, for want of a better word, perspective, in, insofar as, you know, you, you, you're, a, you're a public figure, you know, you've put your head above the parapet about, about this restaurant yeah. you can do, and like you said, it, it wasn't losing money, but it, it wasn't doing what you wanted yeah. it to do. How, how, how did that make you feel when you were closing well, it down? Do you know something, I don't, it, obviously, it's, it's, it wasn't nice to see it, to, to, to see it close down, you know, but it was a, a joint decision uh, with me and my family uh, to close it down. And the thing is, with these things, I, I, I'm not upset. I, I know it's a great business idea. Everyone that comes to the restaurant has all said how much they loved it, and everyone's asking why it closed down because it was ticking over, but it was taking up too much of my time, you know, especially with my filming commitments. It was taking up too much of my time uh, for me to commit to it fully. And I did feel like it was in the wrong location, you know. Do you know what I'm I would actually do it again, but if I'd done it again, I've had a few people chatting to me and now about doing, um, like taking the concept and, and redoing it. But if I'd done it again, I'd, I'd do it more central, even like more like Eastern, like Shoreditchie, that sort of way. Or if you've done it in the West End of London, you could do it in, anywhere in London, that sort of business would work. It would smash it, you know? Um, just outside of London, it just didn't really, it didn't really uh, appeal to everyone. The demographic of Romford as well, is quite a lot of, it's, it's quite old, you know? And do you know what I'm they just want their pie and mash. I ain't gonna lie, they, they, they prefer the pie and mash. There's a, there's a great pie and mash shop there that used to smash, it's been there a long time. But that's, that's, they're very set in their ways and they're very like traditional calves or traditional food, fish and chips, do you know what I'm saying? So it was me, I really should have done more research. My, it was my own fault, you know? But the thing is, I don't look at it like a failure. I look at it like it's a learning curve. I learned from it. I understand, that's taught me a lot about business. And it, and you know what I'm saying? It made me realize that next time I do Next time I do uh, like a business in any in any sort of business, I need to go and do a lot more market research and like the area research, you know, to see what the demographic is. 
before I go and obviously invest money into to something. Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that how you say it's been a learning curve for you as well, which and, and for me it's it's so true that um, you know I always say you only you only ever learn anything from the things that go wrong as opposed to the things that go right. Yeah, because yeah. You know, when it goes right, oh great, you can pat yourself yeah. on the back, yeah, but yeah. you don't really know why it's gone right. It's yeah. just it's just fucking works. Yeah. Uh, but when it, but when it goes wrong, you know you can actually is is very visible and tangible mm. to you know to, to sit down and, cl- and, cl- and clearly clearly see what what you you know what's gone wrong. Mm. Uh, what, what other businesses have you been involved in? You I've been a few night bars, clubs, yeah, bars, a few nightclubs and bars, but they're more quick cash. They're, they're not for longevity. They're more like they 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 build money up for other things like investments, whether like, whether it be property or you know whatever sort of investment you know it could be a, a, anything. Um, but or, or gives you more collateral for another business or more su- sustainable business, you know. Um, but yeah, I've had, and you talk about property. I mean, what, what, what's um, what, what's your angle on property? Are, are, you, are you a you a developer? Do you flip? Do, do, do you like to build long term value? I don't mean I've just been buying things like new builds, you know, things off plan, and just like having them there for investments for a rainy day, you know, or for later life, you know. That's 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 there. That, 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 you can't. That, there's nothing. Look, that old saying. There's nothing safer than bricks and mortar, you know. And obviously, that's something I've been drummed to me from from a young age, so I've always had that there. But I do still need, I'm still looking for the next business. I'm looking at a few more other bars and, and clubs, but more central, um, like more in central London now, because I think anything really now, like London, you, anything, even in Essex now, a lot, a lot of the, the Essex, the Brentwood High Street, that, that's sort of, that's sort of it, a lot of stuff's closing down there. It's, it's becoming a lot tougher uh, as you come away from the, the major cities, not just London, but any anything from uh, like any suburbs uh, towards any city, whether it be Leeds, London, Manchester, Birmingham, it, businesses struggle. Small businesses struggle. Yeah, whether it be the rates, um, you know, competition from the from the powerhouses, from from like the bigger like chains and franchises. You know, um, so the next thing I'm looking at is, is more going to be central uh, to central London, um, or see for me. Uh, even though Brentwood, certain things that are not working out in that high street, for me, it's it's like because of what I do and because people like, if I've done a bar, say, if I've done a bar in Brentwood, um, obviously we're known for going out around Brentwood. So they, we do, they got these things like Towie Tours where they come down um, and they, they want to they wanna party and eat and drink where, where we eat and drink and party on, on, the, on the show, you know? So doing something there would actually, I could actually, I, I could see that working. Do you know what I'm saying? I could say that working, not every business would work there, but I think because of what we do, it would work there. But apart from that, anything else I'd do would be central London. And tell me, obviously we were talking earlier about the fact that there's, uh, you know, there's so many more reality TV shows now uh, and, and and that um, makes, maybe not as popular as, as being, being a bit harsh, but obviously you know, makes it tough with TOWIE, etc. How, how, how do you feel as, a, as an influencer and as, as a celebrity with the fact that there's more and more and more influencers out there as well? And celebrity, you know, celebrities, do, do you think, do you think it di- Dilute some of some of your ability to monetize your band, or have you have you yeah. strength got a core strong audience? Now don't get it wrong. Look, we've got a, we have got a strong audience. You know, Tawi is the original. So when I say I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking about you more, you more as an individual. Do you, you think it's okay, tougher yeah, for you well, personally with more characters out there? No, with more characters, of course, it's, it's, it's common sense. Like the more people, the more influencers of my type out there, the the the, the harder it is for me to win work, and it dilutes it dilutes the work. Um, and dilutes the money, so it makes the, it, 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 like I'm not earning the money that I was earning, say, five years ago, because it makes it a lot tougher. Because there's a lot more people out there who are willing to do it for a lot less, you know. And, and, what, and what's what's your, I guess, what's your personal strategy, or what, what's your tips to other influencers, influencers out there of how to set yourself apart and how, how to make yourself, uh, you know, stand out, in, you know, in a in an overcrowded sea of influencers. Well, I don't really want to give them any tips, do I? <laughs> <laughs> but um. Do you know something? It's just be humble. You know, remember that there's a lot harder ways to earn money. Be realistic. Don't overprice yourself. You know, um, this is the thing. People overprice themselves and they're unrealistic and they forget that they're not. It's not a real job. It's, it don't. It's hard. Yeah, but there's a lot harder, harder ways to earn money. I think this is the problem. A lot of these influencers come out of school, college, and they go straight into, I don't know, like a love island, and they come into, like a lot of the younger cast now, they come in, they haven't really had a real job. I've come, I've come out, I, had a, I, had, I went to, I, I done an apprenticeship, you know, I done my, I done my city and guild and everything. Um, and then I've gone to work for a good, you know, since, well, from our sixth, when I was on a building site at 16, you know, I didn't get into Tower until I was 25, so that's nearly, that's nine years. That's, that, do you know what I'm saying? That, sure. So I've, I've been in the real world, I've realized how hard it is. I've done price work as well. I haven't just had a job where I just plodded on. You know, every day I say go to work. When you're on price work, you start with nothing. You know, so it, you you stand to you to earn your money, and I think that's give me the the values, 
you know, going into into this into this like reality. I've got them values, but going into reality TV. So this is all. This is a bubble for me. This is a touch. I'm very humble. I'm very grateful to be in this world. I think people take it for granted. You know, they think, and they sort of half. A lot of people think it's you know, like people. I don't know. People. I think some of the kids now it gives some some kids wrong wrong impressions. Like they, they think about coming out. They, everyone wants to be famous. I know, don't get me wrong. Everyone has always wanted to be. Everyone's always idolised fame. You know, and fortune sort of thing. But people just think it's like a second nature thing now. It's like, it's like another job title. It's like, oh, I don't know, oh, what do you want to do when you leave school? I want to, be, I want to, I want to go on Love Island, I want to go on Tower Wheel. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's become that sort of thing, which is, which is I, wrong. I think what they don't appreciate nowadays, you know, in the olden days, I think the words fame and fortune kind of went hand in hand. <coughs> Whereas in today's world, you know, fame and fortune are two two completely different separate things. Separate things. There's people that are famous and they ain't got they ain't got they ain't got nothing. They've got no no money. You know, people think a lot of people on Tower they they see they, they, there's people. That, obviously, I'm not going to mention names, but there's people that are not as well off as what people might think. You know, um, at well, all. Not as well off slash you know struggling. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Know, it's, it's, I won't say anyone's struggling because I'd be honest, a lot like don't get me wrong. There's a few of us on there that have come from say I can't. I come from a council state, so. I'm, I, I'm, I've got a very humble background, you know. So, if I fail, I've only. But if I failed, if I if I lost everything tomorrow, I, it's down to me to then go and go back out there, to start again from scratch. Where a lot of them, they they are they, they, their families are quite well off, you know. Um, so it wouldn't be the end of the world for them, you know. Uh, so tell us, what, what what does the future hold for Lockie? Well, for me at the minute, I'm looking at a few other different different uh, business concepts. I'm uh, I'm looking at. Some other bars uh, and restaurants, like I said, uh, in central London and um, and around, I don't know, a few other towns, you know, like towns where the Tower influence is, is big. You know, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm doing my research now. So I'm not going to go and open a bar where no one watches Tower I'm going to go to somewhere where, see, like places obviously we do PA, so personal appearances up and down the country. So I might be going to, so when I see like Liverpool, I'm in Liverpool quite a lot, or I'm in Birmingham quite a lot, see them sort of towns. That makes sense to open a bar in them sort of places, you know, if I was going to open a bar. Sure. Um, then obviously with the Lockers Kitchen, that's another thing I'm looking at as well. Again, doing doing research with that, looking at uh, doing it in Ireland. Um, we've got quite a good reception over in Ireland with, uh, with with the kid. A lot of people come over um, Scotland and then a few other places. Mate, I'll, I'll be honest, I admit, I'm, it, there's a few things I'm looking at, you know. Um, but it's just, it, it's, I don't want to do too much. I need to find something. I, I need to go back when I've got the time. I'm very busy with my film schedule, but when I've got the time, I need to sit back and really analyse everything, you know, like research and, and, and really research everything, you know. And at the minute, obviously, I'm, I'm in talks with people about things, but I wouldn't just go into anything for, see, like now, I've done things in the past and I've, I've just done it for, for, for money. But now I'm, I'm trying to think about things for longevity. So I want to do research, you know. Next, next thing I go into, I want something that's going to last me, you know, so, uh, it, you know, t- twenty years. For, keep, keep me going. 100%. Yeah, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to do these quick cash things. And you know, I, I'm, I really want to get do something and, and and be passionate about something. You know, and so I don't want to stick my things in too many pies. I want to focus on maybe one or two things. You know, but um, let's see see what happens at the minute. I've, I'm in I'm in talks. Um, it's all early days. Early, early days. I'm very and I'm very busy at the minute. I'm doing celebs. Just finished Tawi. I'm very bu- busy with celebs. And again, like I said, I'm a business in myself. So. Sometimes focusing on these other businesses away, like worrying too much about the future, actually half hurts me what I'm doing now. Because do you know what I'm the more famous I become, the more money I'll make, which will give me more leverage to do a better business in the future. If that makes sense. 100%. Where, as when I was, at one point, Lockie's Kitchen was actually hindering my, my, my TV career. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's finding the right balance. I think life is all about balance. It's finding, the key is balance, and it's just finding the right balance cool. and everything. Well, I know we've only talked for about forty-five minutes or so, but it's, it, for, for me, it's clear that uh, it's clear that you got your head screwed on. Yeah. You, 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 you've, you've very much got. Uh, you know, you, I guess you've learnt your lessons in some in some of your previous, you know, not so successful ventures, and I'm sure that whatever you do end up doing, you, you're going to do it great, buddy. So thanks a lot for being I hope here. So, thank you. I hope you guys at home have enjoyed watching this. And um, as as always, if if you're new to the channel, make sure you press subscribe. Um, and uh, and I look forward to seeing you again with uh, with with future guests and, uh, and hopefully you know, d- d- distilling some of their. Uh, online experience and making it real world advice for you guys so thanks a lot for being here Lockie thank you very much for having me thank you take care